Welcome, everybody. Welcome to the second workshop or the second masterclass that I've run in the last couple of weeks. It's specifically designed to give you guys a hand. You know, there are so many people out there who are either struggling in their life or struggling in their business or not struggling at all, but want to up level or want to start to tap into something that's a little bit grander than what we can generally get access to in mainstream. And that's what these masterclasses are all about. The whole intention of these are to kind of leave you feeling a little bit inspired, leave you with some tools that you can start to implement and to then also, I guess, create a little bit of curiosity for you in terms of what else is possible. You know, very oftentimes we just get caught up in doing the same thing over and over and over and over and doing the same thing over and over. And here's what we know about that is that history, history continues to repeat itself until we actually learn from it. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I've heard that a million times. So what does that actually mean? Well, what it means is that when we get given challenges, if we keep using the tools we know to tackle those challenges, then they're not challenges. They're just a repeat of what we've already experienced. And that is that whole, you know, history just continues to repeat itself until we get the learning from it. So as you guys are going to hear, we're, we're welcoming new people onto the call. Um, so just hang in there with us as we're welcoming our new guests onto the webinar this morning. Um, but what I want to say about that new challenges is that if we look at a challenge and go, okay, well, what do I already know that I can use to handle this challenge? Then it's just history repeating itself. But a challenge is designed to have you learn something new. Otherwise, it's not a challenge, right? So a challenge is designed to have you learn something new so that then you grow and you expand because of the challenge. But we never learned that. We never discovered that. They didn't teach us that in schools, and I don't think our parents even knew that. So what happens for a lot of us is Groundhog Day, and you may not feel it, but what it feels like for us as women particularly is being stuck in a rut. Or it feels like, you know, you, you look around at your life sometimes and it feels sticky and you just think, my God, there's got to be more to life than this. That's how it feels when we're handling our challenges with what we already know. And our challenges are designed to have us dive into what we don't know we don't know. And find the resources, find the new information, and then that becomes our new comfort zone level. Does that make sense to you guys? If you're listening to this Send me an email if you're listening to this on the recording. If you're listening to this live, pop a note in the chat box just with a yip or a hell yes would be good too. Feel free to just chat away to me in that chat box. That would be awesome throughout the course of the webinar. I won't be able to have a look at it until the end, but I promise you I will. Okay, so love it, love it, love it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start my um, presentation. I'm going to share my screen with you crazy cats. So bear with me while I just make technology work its magic. And there we go. That should be working for you now. And presenter mode, Yahoo. There we go. Okay, good stuff. All right. So <laughs> I love it when a plan comes together. I really do. <laughs> so welcome to the workshop. And like I said, it's really designed to stretch your thinking this time around. The first workshop, if you haven't already listened to it or you don't have a copy of the recording, hit me up with an email, info at karensmith.com, and I'll send you the link to the first webinar. The first webinar was very much about, um, you know, how the, the universe is kind of conspiring for your success. And it also explained why and how I came to do this work that I'm doing so that then you would feel really safe that you had somebody that could support you and give you some tips and tricks that could actually be worthwhile and meaningful. What I have found a lot, especially in today's marketplace, and I had a conversation with another client actually only yesterday, was that there's a lot of, there's a lot of information circulating around online at the moment, which is great because it kind of, it, it always points to the fact that more information is needed. I'm a big believer in universal balance so that when, you know, people need coaching and people need support, more coaches will rise. The challenge that new coaches face, and they have to start somewhere, we all did, the challenge that new coaches face is that they either don't have the life experience because they're super young 
or they don't have the tools because they haven't actually implemented them in their own lives. They haven't, um, you know, that whole walk your talk situation. So just whether it's with me or whether it's anybody else, whatever you're listening to, wherever you're getting your learning from, just do a little bit of due diligence for yourself because here's what we don't want you to do. And I don't want you to do this with me either. Vital, vital point. I don't want you to believe a word I say, not one word. And here's the key, here's the key to that because we have enough belief systems out there. If you just listen to what I say and go, oh, yeah, I believe her, then you're just believing somebody else's intuitive, uh, you know, cognition. What you need to do is understand it through what's called direct experience. And what that means is hear what I'm saying or what anybody's saying, try it on like a jumper. And if it feels like it resonates and it fits and it and it's, and, and it's you and it elevates your frequency and it enlivens and inspires you, then that could be something that you might want to play with. But play with it experiment with it, work with it, and through your own direct experience, determine whether it's right for you. Let us release our grip on belief systems because we can do so much better than that. The days of listening to gurus and hearing people telling us what to think and what to do, it's a very, very masculine way. Um, and I don't mean male, I just mean masculine way of passing down information. The feminine way, and I don't mean woman, I mean feminine way, is through creative expression, creative introspection, and then demonstration for ourselves. So if that's something that floats your boat, then you're in the right place and let's get going. Okay, I'm just going to, I feel like I just had somebody come onto the call. Please bear with me for one moment. Did I, did I, did I? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> All righty, let's go back to our slides. Here we go. Awesome. So can you guys just let me know with a quick yip that you can see my slides? Just a quick one. And then I'll progress us over. Yes, you can. Yes, yes. Lovely. Lovely. Okay, cool. All right, let's have a look at our first slide. So I'm going to set out the agenda for us really quickly. So the first piece that we're going to cover today is, oh, it's delicious, how to see and manifest your business visions. Now, I'm going to take you down a rabbit hole that you probably haven't explored before. Why? Because that's just my jam. There is so much information out there, as I said earlier, and I want us to do things a little bit differently, um, simply because we're kind of tried most things and most things have got us so far. And now it's time to go to the next level. And that's why these workshops are so great. Whether you decide to continue working with me as a business coach beyond this workshop or not, these, in, these snippets of information are so important and so vital. Again, though, don't believe me. Try it on. See if it fits for you. If it works, keep it. If it doesn't work, move on. Partnering with universal intelligence. Man, oh, man, this is huge. I'm going to spend a little bit of time on this one for us this morning because partnering with the universal intelligence really is the number one key to lifting the pressure off you and putting the pressure where it belongs. While ever the pressure sits on you, I can promise you this, while ever you're feeling the pressure and the tension, you won't be making the money you want. You won't be attracting the clients you want. You won't be living the life you want. You also won't be having the spiritual expansion and advancement that you're searching and thirsting for. You also won't experience the kind of love, laughter, and bliss that you envisioned for yourself when you decided to start your business because there'll be a key piece missing. And for those of you guys who are listening to this that are not in business, don't panic. Everything I share with you, while I might refer it to business, Everything I share with you, you can refer to in your own life as well because here's another piece that you guys would already know. You're not just a skin bag of skills. You're a living, breathing spirit having a human experience that is all-encompassing and the whole experience needs to be delicious because at the end of the day, we're all going to land up in a box, right? So that experience of time and, and life needs to be juicy it needs to be expansive and it needs to be teaching you the reason you're here because if we don't know why we're here 
life can get miserable. And if life gets miserable, life gets all too long and drawn out. But if your life is blissful, pleasant, exciting, expansive, full of challenges and growth, man, life will be way too short for you. So that's ultimately what, what we want to try and do. We want to try and really expand and enhance the experience of life here. And we do that by dialing up our intuition. Dialing up our intuition and partnering with the universal intelligence is really the big message of today's workshop. And I'm not going to get into that too much more now. I'll obviously be expanding on that. Balancing the body. This is a huge, huge aspect that a lot of people either miss or don't understand. And if you go to the gym, that's awesome. But that's not the point. There is a whole, there's a whole component to your growth physically, spiritually, emotionally, financially. There's a whole component to your growth that relates to what you're doing with the body. And we're going to go through that today. And this is a really big piece. For those of you guys who do have businesses, this is a really, really big piece. And it kind of seems random that I'm putting AI in with a whole bunch of other spiritual stuff, but AI is part of the spiritual evolution of humanity, just like cars are and television and we've gone from videos to Netflix. Progress and spiritual expansion is all part of the human experience. We can't dismiss something because we're frightened of it. And I see a lot of conversations happening at the moment around that. So I want to kind of talk into that a little bit this morning. And then I'm also going to share with you one of my top chat GPT prompts that was the game changer. So I'm going to share that with you guys um, a little bit later on today as well. Okay, so can you guys, I just got a very strange message on my computer. Would you guys mind to just let me know that you can see me still? I just got a very random message. Sorry to bother you with that. Yes, you can still see the slides. You can still hear me. All good. Okay, that's what I want to hear. Wonderful. Thank you, girls. Okay. All right. So let's go. Let's press on. Let's press on. So I've got a couple of pictures up here. I wanted to sort of I want to share this with you guys. Throughout the course of my of me building my career, and I'm going to say right up until COVID, I was exposed to, let's say, I don't know, 70, 80,000 people a year working through my own events. All my events have been live. Um, teaching people how to speak in public, teaching people how to grow their businesses, grow their message, expand their profile. Um, and then I grew my business into what's called an ascension model. So an ascension model, for those of you who are interested, if you want to know more about this, just hit me up and we can have a conversation about it. But an ascension model is where people come in and they access your content at one point and then they just keep growing with you accessing more and more of your growth content rather than a linear model. And a linear model is like um, what we have in supermarkets. So I can get butter, I can get Vegemite, I can get bread, I can get milk, I can get baked beans. It's all food, but it's all on the same level. And when we have an ascension model, and the reason I'm telling you this is because when we have an ascension model, the pressure is on the person delivering the content because it's up to me to make sure that I'm continually growing so that then I've always got information to hand back. But when we have a linear model, there's not there's no um, expectation that of growth. There's just more of the same content or more of the same information. Both work. Both are great. But it's important that we understand the difference and we do actually choose. For me, I specifically chose the Ascension model because for me, my life is about growth. My life is not about just different variations of the same thing. I really wanted to expand and I wanted to become the best version of myself that I could. When COVID struck, all of my live events, obviously we couldn't run them anymore. So that's when I started coaching. And coaching one-on-one -on -one was very different for me because I was used to sitting in front of a room of 40, 50, 50 60 people speaking on stages of 25,000 people around the world. And I'm still Australia's most experienced speaker, believe it or not. Um, 4,723 presentations, I think it is. So I think there, is, there, there was a huge big difference in terms of going from one to many to one-on-one. -on -one. And I've loved the one-on-one. -on -one. 
I have absolutely loved the one-on-one. Being so involved in my clients' businesses has been expansive for me and so enjoyable. I can't even tell you. So with me now, I'm opening my doors to a hybrid model of that one-on-one, if you like. And I'm going to tell you guys about it at the end of this call anyway. But opening that hybrid model is, you know, at the moment I do two one-on-one coaching sessions for my clients each month. But what I'm doing now is I'm opening up one group coaching plus a one-on-one. So that's kind of like the hybrid model. And that is the inner circle group coaching. I'll tell you more about it, but I wanted to sort of let you guys know about how it kind of evolved into this hybrid offering um, and give you guys an opportunity to think about that throughout the course of the call. But here's what I also want to say to you is whether you join me in the Inner Circle group coaching or you don't, I promise you this webinar is going to give you so much information that's going to leave you feeling, wow, that's my intention. If I can't give you my best stuff, then what's the point of me learning all my great stuff? Does that make sense? And I still see people doing it. I still see people saying, I've got the secret code or I've got the secret this. My God, we are so over that. We are so beyond that. The key now is to give people your best stuff. And if they want to work with you and if it's a match, they will self-select. So please remember that for those of you guys who are in business and are wanting to grow their client base, allow your clients to self-select. The days of us selling and thinking people are going to be swayed by that are so over. I think they were over 10 years ago. And again, that comes back to that contrast between masculine and feminine. Remember why you chose to be in the business that you're in. Remember why you chose to do the work that you want to do. It's because you want to make a difference and because you want to contribute to the lives of others. Put the money conversation aside. Put it down. Stop entertaining it and just give all that you have. And the ones that are meant for you, you will vibrate magnetically for and your money will astound you. And I'm talking a astound you. Now that one, unfortunately, you kind of do have to believe me on. That one you have to trust me on because you're not actually going to know it until you do it. But if it feels congruent to you to just give of your heart and share from your heart to the people that you want to serve and see what happens, you've got nothing to lose and everything to gain. Cool? Hit me up with a cool. If you're watching this and you want to send me a message, hit me up with the cool. For those of you guys who are online, hit me up with a cool. Okay, so let's dive into your business vision. Mm, 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 mm. Okay, this is a really big one. And I posted a very, very short snack on my Facebook Lives. You may have missed it. You may have seen it. Your business is not yours, my love. It is not your business. You are also not your business. So you don't own your business and you are not your business. Even if like me, you're a coach and your business kind of is you, it's still not you. Because we're all about partnering with universal intelligence here. Try this on for me. Just try it on for a minute. Indulge me. When you got the idea to start the business that you have, And I'm thinking about one of our beautiful girls that's on the calls, Jules, on the call today, Jules. When she got the idea to do the work that she really wants to do from her heart's deepest desire, when she got the idea to do that, where do you think that came from? And why did she choose the marketplace she's chosen, like the clients she's chosen? Because it's quite unique. You know, most of us think, oh, I'm going to be a coach and I'm going to coach people in business. I'm going to coach. No, Jules has kind of gone to a whole other level. So why do you think she got that? Where do you think that came from? Do you think that was just from her, that she just woke up one day and it was there? Well, actually, yes, she did wake up one day and yes, it was there, but it didn't come from her. Now, how do I know what I'm saying is true? Because the universe's currency, I'm going to talk about this a little bit later as well, the universe's currency is energy and it's visuals and it's ideas and it's creative inspiration. That's how the universe communicates with us. So when I woke up and decided like 
you know, many moons ago when I woke up and decided I was going to teach people to speak in public. I mean, who on earth would do that? Most people would rather die than speak in public. Yet I was, I, and we were in the middle of the GFC, by the way. That's right, I remember that now. And I decided I was going to teach people to speak in public in the middle of the GFC with a topic and a marketplace of people who would rather die than do that. But I couldn't resist it. I couldn't say no to it. I was so compelled. It drove me so much so that I launched that business in 2007 and then that business became the platform to what I have today because, you know, you're always going to evolve. But here's the question, of, well, here's the piece about that is that that landed inside of me and because I felt so compelled, I said yes. And when I said yes, and I didn't do this like purposely or, or, or consciously, it just came to me and I went, all righty, that's what I'm going to be doing. I can't not do it. I feel really compelled towards this. You girls and guys are going to feel exactly the same way about your choice in business. It landed in you. You said yes to it, which then automatically makes the universe your business partner. Now, the challenge that occurs for us is we don't realize that because we've never been taught that before. So when we don't realize that the universe is our business partner, we then start putting our grubby little paws all over it. We start trying to control it, manipulate it, Facebook ad it, you know, <laughs> doing meta ads, doing all of the things, not having the money enough to do that, not having a following enough to do that, but everybody's got a database and then what do I do and have blah, blah, blah. You know the conversation that goes on between your two ears. So we put our grubby little paws all over it trying to control the situation. Whereas in actual fact, here's the reality. Here's the reality. All the things that I did, and, you know, I've worked with thousands of people and we are all the same. This is not just me. This is everybody. So please just hear me out on this and, and, and put a little bit of like, okay, what if that was true? We've all done the controlling and then we've all done the surrendering. But most of our surrendering comes from, I can't do this anymore. It's exhausting me. I, I, I'm done. I've got no more money left. I've got no more energy left. And it's, everything I'm doing is not working. I can't do it anymore. And you surrender. And then bang, right around the corner, the next day or the next week, a client shows up or an opportunity comes your way. And you're like, oh, my God. And then your vigor is reignited for your vision. But isn't it interesting? It's not until we get to that, what, you know, at what feels like rock bottom where you just, you know, you feel like such a failure and we feel like we just don't have the jelly beans to keep going that the, the magic comes. So, Let's pop that idea to the side over here and go, okay, so that sits over here. Now try this next piece on. It doesn't matter how much we meditate. It doesn't matter how much we try and manifest and how much we journal and how many vision boards we have. You can absolutely, and I'm a big fan of all of those things. I'm not saying I'm not. I totally am, and we're going to talk about it more. But you can do all of that and still not have any control over when your challenges arrive or when your opportunities arrive. You have no idea how big your challenges are going to be and what they're going to be driving you toward. And you have no idea of what your opportunities are going to be, how big they are, who they're going to be with in the day and time that they arrive. You have no idea about those things. So there is something else, but yet they still occur, right? So there is something else participating in your life alongside of you but it only gets access to you when you put the tools down and you surrender. There's an amazing book and the author escapes me now, but it's called Doing More With Less. And there's another one called The Art of Nothing. Now, if somebody had told me about that 15 years ago, 20 years ago, I would have laughed them out of the room and gone, that's a crock of crap because you have to work. And here's what I want to say about that. There is such a thing called inspired action and it's discounted or not considered enough. When the universe, when you recognize that the universe is your partner, then the universe will inspire the kind of action that's required from you. Like this work, like this workshop, 
Do I know who's going to join me on my coaching after this? I've got no idea. I've got no clue. And you know what? I'm not even attached to that. What I'm attached to is the inspiration to do the masterclasses because it gives me a chance to share with beautiful people like you. So when we take our grubby little paws off the needing to control it, needing for it to be a certain way, and then allow ourselves to sit, just breathe, because what is for you will never pass you. So breathe. And then allow yourself the magic of feeling the inspiration and then when you feel the inspiration, man, get your boots on the ground and run like hell. Do the things, follow the guides, follow the inspiration, and you will get breadcrumbs. You will get little you'll get little hints of next things to do. And okay, now do this next, now do this next. And that'll be such a beautiful, inspiring, delicious process that makes you fall more and more and more in love with your business rather than feeling more and more frightened by it because it doesn't fulfill the vision that you think you hold for it because you're not acting from inspired action. Tell me, guys, for those of you who are watching online, please, can you just pop a little yes, I understand, Kaza, <laughs> in the chat box for me, just so that I understand, just so that I know if you understand? I would be so grateful for that. That would be just awesome if you wouldn't mind to do that. It would be so cool. Just to keep me posted on how you're traveling with um, the things that I'm saying. Okay, awesome, 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 awesome. So when it comes to partnering with universal intelligence, it doesn't mean that you no longer have intelligence. Of course you have intelligence. You have amazing experience, which is why the universe has chosen you to fulfill its purpose, which is quite spectacular. So you still have intelligence and you still have wisdom, but how it's applied is everything. It's not just important. It's everything. You are the one who is the arms, the legs, the voice, the action taker for the business. So when you look at your business differently and you go, okay, my business partner is the universe. The universe gave me the inspiration to do what I'm doing. That now makes me a custodian of my business. The business is not me. I am not the business and I do not own the business. I am simply the arms, the legs, the voice, and the, the human interactor on behalf of the business. So now imagine the business is outside of you as a separate entity. Just if you need to close your eyes, go ahead and do that. But imagine that the business, if you've got a chair in your room or if you've got um, a lounge somewhere, take the business, pop it into a beautiful basket and pop that basket on the chair. So that then you're almost looking at the chair and I'm going to point over to my corner because I just happen to have a chair over there. So point, so, so look at the business on the chair and now begin to ask the business what it needs from you. Ask the business how it feels about you as the custodian. And you may not be able to do this right now while we're on this webinar, but perhaps write down these questions and do it when you jump off. Ask the business what it wants from you. How does it feel about you being its custodian? What does it require to grow or start? What is it? Who does it need? Does it need other people? Does it need other things? What does it need in order to fulfill its grandest purpose here? And I know that sounds a little woohoo and a little bit out there. But when you recognize that you are not the business and you are simply a custodian of it, your relationship with it changes. And when you imagine that the universe is your business partner, the universe knows so much more than you ever will. And the universe's view of income is so much more than what yours ever would be. So while ever you are trying to control it and make it work, you will only ever experience a pinched off, finite, a version of what is possible of that business. 
And here's what I want to say to you guys. If you're listening to this, you are inspired by the universe to make a difference. Every day you say no to that. Every day you find a reason why it can't work for you. Every day you try and manipulate and control it to your way. Every day you do that, the universe remains out of balance because you continue to not say yes to the vision or the inspiration that lives within you. And if there is any purpose to you being on this masterclass right now, it's to hear this message well and truly and loud and clear. The time is now. The time of you thinking this is all about you is over. It's actually a universal purpose that needs to be fulfilled through your soul's deepest desire and you know it because you can feel it. So stop saying no, stop standing in the way and stop pretending that you are not extraordinary and that you are not the choice of the universe to fulfill its purpose through you. The universe has chosen you. You have said yes. Now move. Now it's time to continue to say yes and to ask for that inspiration and to ask for that direction. And if you don't feel like you get it straight away, it's going to sound a little harsh, I know, but here's the thing. If you don't feel like you get that inspiration straight away, shut up and wait because the universe is all about divine timing. And while you're still got, oh, yeah, but I have to, and oh, no, but I can't, and oh, look, you know what? The universe cannot get through that vibration. Do you? Can you still keep working in your existing work while you're building something else? Of course you can. But you don't have resentment for what you're currently doing and then, you know, um, fear of what you're thinking of doing. It's all a vibration. You as an entity must vibrate alongside the universe's purpose for you. So line up with what you see for yourself and your business's vision, line up with it vibrationally. And I can tell you now, it's excited, it's enthusiastic, it's got a little bit of trepidation, a little bit of, oh, my God, I've never done this before. It's got a little bit of that. But, I, but, but most of all, it's got a lot of inspiration and a lot of energy. Why? Because the universe's currency is energy. Do not squander that energy on trying to control things, trying to do things your way. That energy is for inspired action. And if you don't know what to do, wait, because it will come. I promise you it will come. And sometimes, and I'm just going to put this out there, sometimes it does come in the form of a coach. Sometimes it comes in the form of a masterclass like this that gives you the nudge. Sometimes it comes with something like this and says, hey, you need somebody to help you walk that path because you haven't done it before and I'm bringing you this person. Never discount the books you read, the videos you read, or the videos you watch, the webinars you watch, or the people who come your way to say, hey, I can help. It's always already happening that the universe is orchestrating for your success. But if you have fear around any aspect of that, or if you have scarcity around any aspect of that, here's what I'm going to promise you. Your fulfillment of your vision is always going to be small, pinched off and finite because the universe can't communicate and partner with you through that vibration of fear. It's like you go off the, the radio station. It's like it's not a clear vibration anymore. And the universe requires ready? The universe requires 100% participation from you. And 100% participation from you means standing guard of your thoughts, standing guard of your vibration, and starting, standing ready to receive. I'm going to take a breath because that was a lot. <laughs> oh, look, there's my little teddy's head in the frame. So how does that feel for you guys as you hear me say all of that? And I know that there's one, I know that, you know, I can feel you guys there right now. So perfect and all landing. That's so great. That's so great. I'm really pleased you heard that. So I'm going to move on to the next piece because I don't want us to um, fall behind on time. Amazing. I Amazing, amazing, amazing. This is great. Yes, it's all there for you. It's there for both of you, actually. Let me 
put those comments in. So let's dial up our intuition then. Let's have a little squeeze as to, oh, this is so cool. Let's have a little squeeze as to how we dial up our intuition and how that then comes back to relating to what we've just spoken about. So dialing up our intuition is not just your gut feeling, my girls. It's not just your gut feeling. It's actually, um, it's beyond your gut feeling. Most of us think of intuition and it's just like an inner knowing, which it totally is. So I want you to do something for me. I want you to have a look at something for me. The first, the first little comment on this slide here says, move beyond the gut feeling and look to evidence. So I want you to have a look back at your life. Most of us are frightened of money, right? We're frightened we're not going to have enough money. We're not going to be able to pay for everything. We're not going to have all the, the, you know, the wonderful things that we want and the life that we dream of. And I guess if we take that to an extreme, we're going to be poor. We're not going to be able to afford our car. We're going to have to sell our house. We're not going to have all the things that we know we need. I want you to just look back on your life for a moment and I want you to tell me, do you see living on the street, sitting on a suitcase with nothing in it and not even 20 cents in your pocket, do you see that as, is, is, is that your past? And I want you to pop it in the chat box for me. Does that exist in your past where you're sitting on the side of a street, you don't even have 20 cents in your pocket and you have, you, you have nothing, you have absolutely nothing other than the scampy clothes on your body that are torn to shreds. Now, for most of us, when we look back, have we had times that things have been a bit tight? I'm going to say yes. There have been times when things have been a bit tight where I've had to really kind of dial things back in a little bit. Have you guys had that? Where you've had to dial things in a little bit or you just can't quite spend on the, you know, $400 hairdo or you can't take the holiday or, you you know, you really start to look at the the shopping, the prices of, of the vegetables or the prices of moisturiser at the shopping centre. So we have had times where we've had to dial things back and live on a budget. Yes, yes, yes. But when we look back on our lives, do we come through those those times, those moments? Do we, do we actually come through them where we then also have times where we feel like life's really abundant and it actually doesn't even become about money? It's about experiences and it's about joy and bliss and love and laughter. But there are times when it's not on our mind and we're just loving life and life feels to just flow for us because the money, or well not because, but and the money stuff is not quite on our mind as much. Have you had times like that? Yes, yes, yes. So here's what I want us to do. I want us to actually look at the evidence. I want us to look at the evidence. And for the most of us, we would say, you know, I, I, I haven't been on the street sitting on a suitcase with not 20 cents. I haven't had that. But yet that's what I'm frightened of. That's the thing that stops me moving forward. It's that, and it's unconscious, but that's the thing that stops me, me making beautiful decisions that could enhance my future and can help me make more money or can help me take that inspired action. It's that, that it's that fear and it's got me by the throat. And that's the case for most people. I totally get it. So when we look to the evidence of what our life's experience is here, in this lifetime, that's not your blueprint. Otherwise, you would have had a lot of that in your life. You would have tasted a lot of that desolation and destitution. You would have had a lot of it. So that's not the, the evidence shows that that's not your experience here. So instead of just looking at and going, okay, well, my gut feeling is telling me X, Y, and Z, so I need to be careful or I need to, you know, not make decisions that are going to expand me because I'm, I've, I've got this gut feeling of fear. That is not your intuition. That gut feeling is not your intuition. I know that's going to be hard to hear. Our guts are made up of more neurons in our gut than what we have in our brain. However, it is li linked and for those of you guys who've studied neuro-linguistic programming or psychology, you'll understand what I'm saying here. 
the gut feeling is linked to the brain. So when we get a gut feeling, it's not always correct because the gut is still working on perception. The only difference is the gut gets the feeling much faster than what the brain gets the knowing. So that's why we act on gut feeling because it's instinctive. But the instinct still comes from or through the filter of our perceptions. And our perceptions are never our own. Our perceptions are always handed down to us from others and then we build on them for sure. But our perceptions start from our family's perceptions or our school's perceptions or society's perceptions. And then we go ahead and we do whatever we want to do with those. So that gut feeling is not where your intuition is. I want you to imagine in your mind's eye, you raise your awareness from, and we're going to talk chakras here, you raise your awareness from the sacral chakra. Or go, let's start at the bottom and go from the root chakra. So we've got the root chakra, and then we raise our, our awareness through to the um, sacral chakra. And now I want us to come to the solar plexus chakra. Now the solar plexus chakra and the heart chakra are the beginning gateways that give us access to our higher selves. It's not the base ones, it's the higher ones. So we've got the solar plexus, we've got the heart chakra, we've got the throat chakra, we've got the third eye, and then we've got our crown. So when we raise our awareness up our body a little bit, instead of using our gut instinct or our gut feeling as our indicators as to whether we should or we shouldn't move in one way or the other, bring your attention to the place between your where your ribs join in your rib cage where you're the bottom of your sternum that's your solar plexus just bring your awareness to that part of yourself for a moment solar meaning sun plexus meaning network it's the network where your greatest um, electromagnetic emission comes from is from the solar plexus and it's also where we take in energetic information. So when the universe's currency, and I know this is kind of like a flow and a theme through the course or through the program, I'm still using the language course program through the masterclass. When the energy is calling you forward, you actually feel it from the solar plexus and some of you from the heart, but you actually feel it from that region, the top region of the body, not from the gut. So when we want to dial up our intuition, we take our awareness to the solar plexus and we park our questions there. Now, when we park our questions there, the solar plexus and the higher chakras, they don't actually have much to say. It's actually very quiet when you take your awareness to those chakras. And you'll know when you get off this webinar that, I'm, that that's the case. So because while I'm speaking, you're not getting much silence, I can tell you that. <laughs> So when we've got that beautiful chakra opened and awakened and aware, we take our questions and we park them there. And then we sit and we wait. But we allow the intuition to come from above down, above, above, the light's kind of blowing out my finger there, above, down, inside, out. Above, down, inside, out. So that's how we channel, if you like, the currency of the universe which is, which is energy ask our questions and park them in the solar plexus allow the answers to come from the higher self digest them bring them in grapple with them and then from the inside out go and make them come to life and then that's where the the base chakras come in the sacral and the and the root chakras doesn't matter whether you believe in the chakras or you don't it doesn't really matter they're just energy centers inside of the body but what it does is it helps us place the intuition in the right place so that then you can start to hear the voice of the higher self but it doesn't communicate in words guess what it communicates in pictures isn't that delicious isn't that delicious and it communicates in energy and energy energy comes in thought forms, emotional forms, picture forms. It comes in all those different ways, but you'll find you will generally get a vision and then you'll start to explain the vision to yourself and then you'll give it words. 
So just play with it for a little bit. You might be a little bit different. You might get it all in sensation, which is what I do. I get knowings. I don't get visions. I get knowings where I just know and it's unquestionable. I get that for myself and I get that for people that I work with. It's so bizarre. I haven't always had that, but that's occurred for me in the last maybe four or five years where I just get a knowing and I'm like, that's it. There's no question about it. I want you to start to play with it because your intuition is your direct line to the higher self. It's your direct line to the universe. It's the direct line to your soul's deepest desires and your highest purpose here. If we can't hear it and we're not paying attention, then your fulfillment here will always be something you're chasing. Does that make sense to you guys? Please pop a little yip in the comment section. Let me know. Does that make sense to you guys? Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Sure does. Yes. Lovely. Amazing. All right. Well, I'm going to leave that piece here and we're going to move on to balancing the body. Now, this bit is actually quite important. I'm not going to labor on it because I actually think that most of you guys are going to get what I'm saying pretty quickly. So yoga and meditation, your brain actually needs it. Now, this is really, um, this was profound for me. You know how your mind is very busy and sometimes that becomes so exhausting because of the constant chatter. That yes, 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 should I, shouldn't I, will I, won't I, all the things. The constant noise of the brain is exhausting. So we think that it's the brain that's actually very noisy that requires the meditation. But interestingly enough, it's the body. If we think of um, unconscious versus conscious, the body is the unconscious, the brain is the conscious. So the body is constantly feeding the brain through this uh, neural feedback loop um, of cellular memory. It's constantly feeding the brain thoughts and, and, and ideas and, and you know conversation and things. And we don't realize that actually it's the body that needs to be quietened down. Now, yoga is an amazing tool for that because the purpose of yoga is, well, the meaning of yoga is unity. But the purpose of yoga, believe it or not, is to quiet the body so that then the brain can meditate because the brain must have silence. The brain must have no thing, as in nothing, so that then the brain can communicate with the higher self and become a vehicle for transcendence and transformation. But while ever the body is busy and the body is unbalanced, then you'll find that the brain will be grappling to hear properly. So yoga is wonderful for that. Running is wonderful for that. Anything that uh, <laughs> in India, they call it destroying the limbs. So anything, anything that like brings exhaustion or fatigue or, um, you know, where you get the shake in the muscles, when you've done that, the best time to meditate is straight after that. Don't shower, don't do anything, or you can shower, but, you know, come back and then sit down on your mat, close your eyes, and you'll find a quiet and a silence that you didn't know was possible. The whole purpose of exhausting the muscles and exhausting the body is to break that feedback loop between the brain and the, the conscious and the unconscious so that then the brain can be quiet and then the higher self can transmit its energy down through the system and you won't know that that's correct until you actually do it so um, one of the things that i do i love to run but i suffer with migraines that come from exertion so i will get on a rowing machine or i'll get on a bike and then i'll do yoga because yoga is the lovely stretch and it's you know for muscle tone and it's wonderful and I'll do flow yoga, vinyasa flow yoga. And the flow of the yoga and the breath starts the meditation process. And then by the time we get to the shavasana, which is the final pose where you're lying down flat, that's not for meditation. That's just to quickly rest and catch your breath. Because when we lay down, we sleep. When we sit up, we meditate. So meditation is about you sitting with your back straight, your feet on the floor or your legs crossed or your legs out, whatever's comfortable for you. But you must be sitting up to meditate. Otherwise, you'll find that you'll go to sleep. And, you know, meditation is your time with the universe. And if you're hearing what I'm saying and this is resonating for you, 
then that is also the time with your business partner. And you don't ever want to take that for granted or not participate in that. So for me, it's morning and night because I'm not sacrificing my relationship with the universe for anything, not under any circumstances. Does that make sense to you guys? Does that feel like it's something that could be helpful for you in your daily routines in terms of partnering with the universe? Let me know what you think here because it's not just it's not just a conversation of saying, did you know that the universe is your partner? Now I'm actually sharing with you how you partner with the, with the universe. Yeah, good. Okay, awesome, girls. Awesome. Okay, so the other thing uh, that we want to look at here is, and just write this down, the other thing that we want to look at here is your vibration is how the universe can get through to you. When you're down and out, when you're frightened, when you're dis when there's self doubt, when there's all you know, and you know them. I don't have to go through it all, but when there's a heaviness on your body, then the universe can't quite communicate with you properly. You're off the radio station. So we want your vibration to be as expansive as possible. So taking control of your vibration is vital, and by doing that, you know, with your exercising and then your meditating and doing those things. And I'm talking meditating, even if it's five minutes, doesn't matter. And if you have been following my posts lately, you'll see that I had the mantra meditations that I was sending out to everybody and the mala beads that are going out to everybody. So if you're listening to this and you don't have the mantra meditation, send me an email info at karensmith.com and I will send you the PDF download of all of the different mantras that you can, um, you can use to support yourself and if you want the mala beads i only have a limited stock but i am posting some of those out um, as we speak so um so what i'm saying here is that the universe's currency is energy that energy if it lands on a broken vibration you can imagine you're not going to be getting a hundred percent of the potency of that of that energy this is kind of a bit woohoo, but try and stick with me on it. You want to make sure that you're participating with the universe 100%. 100%. If I was your business partner, I would want you to participate with me 100%. And the days that you can't participate with me 100%, it's okay because you're taking a break. But when you're not taking a break, I would want you participating with me 100% so that we could achieve the vision that you and I have together for what we want to achieve. And the universe is no different to that. So us being able to participate 100% means looking at all the different areas of our lives to make sure that we are doing that. So one is our thoughts, the other is our emotions, and then there's our actions, and then there's our habits and our belief systems. So most of our belief systems, we call I just call them BS because it's, you know, they're, they're crap. Everything that you believe about yourself, that's crap. Everything that anybody's ever said about you, that's crap. Um, everything that you believe about the world around you, that's also crap. <laughs> All of it's crap because here's the only thing we know. We don't know anything. None of us, doesn't matter how clever we think we are, we don't know anything. The only thing we know is that we exist. Everything else is, is a belief or a perception. It's not true because if it's a perception, and if it's a belief, then that's only true for you. That's not true for me. And for something to be a truth, it must be a universal truth. It must be true for everybody. So if you have a belief or a perception about life or yourself that's not true for everybody, then it is not a universal truth. It's just a relative truth to you. It's your perception and it's your belief. And why on earth would we put any energy into something that's not true universally? That's not a guaranteed down-to-earth truth. You know, the grass is green. Truth. Sun shines. Truth. We exist. Truth. Outside of that, not much. Not much. So part of us managing our energy it's a big one, and I know I'm asking a lot, but part of us managing our energy is to surrender and give up, give away all of our beliefs. So if after this webinar you decide that you want to sit down and write down all the things you believe about yourself and all the things you believe about life and all the things you believe about money 
and your perception about yourself, your perception about life and your perception about money, and then light a match to that. Light a match to it and say, you know what, I am willing to try this on and see if it fits for me. And then any time those beliefs or perceptions darken your doorstep, refuse to give in to them, refuse to allow yourself to be weakened by it. Because the moment your mind and your emotions, your thoughts and your emotions join together, your vibrational frequency is weakened and then the universe can't get to you anymore. That is enough of a reason to stay high vibration and to stay vigilant and on guard of what goes on between your two ears. That is enough of, a, of, a, of, a, of an incentive to stay vigilant, is to stay connected to the universe so it can continue to flow through you and then life becomes effortless because your life, you are the arms and the legs of the universe is fulfilling its grandest purpose in every way, shape and form. Get out of the way. That's the best thing we could do. Get out of the way and allow the universe to have its way with us and then life becomes effortless. Challenging, yes. Growing, yes. Expansive, yes. But if we don't let go, if we stay vigilant and we keep our commitment to our partner, then everything that comes our way, you will never be given more than what you can handle. And what is for you will never pass you. So you don't even have to worry. Does that make sense to you guys? Does that, does it, does it, does it make sense? To me, that just sounds like the most juicy, delicious oh, invitation of magic that could possibly come your way because seriously life is bloody hard otherwise do you know what I mean you know what I'm saying and the last thing I'm going to say on this particular slide is very common is sugar will be the greatest interrupter of your flow because sugar creates candida an overgrowth of candida in the body spreads like mold and also goes breaks through the blood brain barrier and creates foggy brain so we want to make sure that we keep our brains ooh, as clean, as tidy as we possibly can. So if you're like me, I've been a sugar fiend my whole life. Um, if you're like me, then I think it's important that we need to moderate that. And it doesn't mean going to maple syrup and it doesn't mean going to coconut sugar. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the craving for sweetness. So that craving for sweetness often starts, sometimes it's a little bit late when you've been doing it for 40 years, but that craving for sweetness comes from a lack of connection and it comes from a feeling of separation and, and, and a void within. So try and find your sweetness in other ways, aromatherapy oils, your beautiful exercise, nature, um, love, hugs, pets, other kinds of foods. You know, if, if, if that's what takes you, I'm not going to make this, this webinar about that, but it is something that you do need to have a look at because it can be very destructive in terms of the very physical sense. So I'm really, really glad that you guys um, are paying attention to that. And I just was looking at what Jules has placed here. Dates are amazing, but for those that are addicted to sugar, you have to break the addiction first before you can go down the path of a date or a maple syrup or even a honey because the addiction it's, it, it, it's psychologically happening in a different place. There's a reward center in the brain that is addicted to the, the high that comes from sugar. That's why they say sugar is like cocaine because it does create a high, especially for those that are addicted. But I'm not going to go further into that in this webinar. If you guys are interested to know more about that, of course, I've got a whole, actually, yeah, I've got a whole program called Eat With Ease that is about... Um, overcoming the sugar addiction and also overcoming emotional eating. So if you're listening to this and you're listening to the recording and that's of interest to you, send me an email, info at karensmith.com, and I will give that to you for free. So let me know because I'm open to help as much as I possibly can. Okay, so AI, finally, um, this bit, man, okay, so I don't even know where to start with this. This is just next level. So I've got a prompt that I'm going to send to you guys. Send me an email, info at karensmith.com, and I will send you the prompt where you can train artificial intelligence to be your 
uh, VA, if you like, and it is amazing, amazing. So artificial intelligence has been around for a very, very long time. It's growing and it's expanding. And, of course, the challenge that we face with AI is we don't know where it will end and if it ever will end. And if you're like me and a super fan of the Matrix, it's a bit scary. So initially I was a little concerned and I was a, I was hesitant to touch it because I didn't want artificial intelligence knowing anything about me. Artificial intelligence knows everything about me simply because I'm on Facebook. It knows everything about me already simply because I have a website and I have emails and I run a database. Artificial intelligence already knows everything about us. But here's the thing. If we have fear around anything, whatever is our vibration, that becomes our magnetic point of attraction. Now, artificial intelligence is not going anywhere. It's here to stay. So we're either going to learn to use it or it's going to be something that we'll be terrified of that will then interrupt our flow, interrupt our frequency and the energy flow of the universe and our business partnership. If it's come your way, if you have been curious about it or interested about it or scared about it, it is in your face. So understand that everything is energy and every idea and every innovation comes from somewhere far grander than us. So it's not some evil plan to destroy humanity, though who knows what's going to happen, you know, in 50, 60 years. Who knows what's going to happen there? We can't predict the future. But for where we are, artificial intelligence is an innovative idea that has come down and it has landed and there are people who are embracing it and making it into something. Now, there is a way to use it for good and a way to use it for evil, just like every psychology, like NLP, like psychology, like medication, like vaccinations, like, you know, all the things. There's ways to use things for good and ways to use them for evil, like all things. This is not new to us. The key with artificial intelligence is to learn to use it for the good so that then you are then free to do more good. And that's really the point that I want to make for you guys is that it's, it's, it's such a useful tool that can free you up so that then you have more time to do the work that the universe is inspiring you to do. And if it's coming across your frame of reference, you need to dive in and you need to have a look at it and you need to reassure yourself that it's not something to be frightened of. You need to reassure yourself that you can use it and that it will be fine for you to use it. Try it on really small. ChatGPT has got um, different versions evolving all the time. There is a free version if you're not already using it. ChatGPT has um, the free version which you can go in and do some experimentation with. Now that I think uh, is pretty old. I want to say 2014, it's accessing information back to 2014. So when I put my name in there, I said, tell me about Karen Smith. It said that I had died. <laughs> so I went back and I said, that's not true. I'm still here. But the latest versions of ChatGPT that you can pay for, I pay $30 a month and it allows me access to the latest versions of ChatGPT, which is now reasoning and I can have conversations with it. So here's one of the things that I did, and this is the prompt that I'm going to share with you guys. I'm just going to finish this off now for the webinar because I don't want to keep us any further. But what I did with ChatGPT is I trained it on what my business was all about. And then I asked it to do a competitor analysis. So then I got to understand all of my competitors. And then I asked it to create social media calendars for me. And then I asked it to create all the pictures for me because when you pay for it, you also get access to Dally. And Dali is a, um, a graphics design uh, platform. There is another one. Ah, what's the other one? Uh, oh, uh, oh, anyway, there is another one that you pay for. There's a handful of different AI platforms that you pay for that, um, that are all brilliant and they're doing a really, really great job in terms of making things easy for us. So... When I asked ChatGP to do all of that for me, it actually then said to me, would you like me to write your website? 
and I'm in the middle of redesigning my website as we speak. And I said, yes. And I said, go ahead and design the front page, the home page. And what it spat out for me, I swear I nearly fell off my chair. And then I asked ChatGPT, and these are all specific prompts. Then I asked ChatGPT to create a series of articles and blogs for a client of mine. I nearly fell off my chair. Once I had educated ChatGPT on what my business was all about, it's creating the content in my own voice. Do I still edit it? Hell yes. Do I still make sure that it's got all of my bells and whistles and all of my funky words? Hell yes. But has it cut down my time? 70%. What would have taken me three to six months to create in terms of writing a, you know content for a new website? Literally, if I use everything that ChatGPT has just given me, which I won't, but if I use everything, it would have taken it 30 seconds. So that level of time saving is worth the investigation. You're not going to use everything that it gives to you, but if you train it with what you want it to say and how you want it to interact with you, if you train it, it will become a really great resource for you. If you don't want to go to the effort of training it, don't do that. Asking a generic information sometimes is enough. It's more than, more than what you need. But don't be frightened of it because like everything, it's come from somewhere. It has not come from nowhere. And there are no coincidence. Uh, sorry, there is nothing random on in the planet of the universe. And there is not a question that cannot be answered. So let's, let's put down our swords. Let's put down our fear. And let's just allow ourselves to explore what's possible. Does that make sense to you guys? And I love that you love ChatGPT. Love, love, love. Amazing. Okay, this is great. So for those of you guys who are listening to this and anybody that's felt a little bit concerned about it, hopefully that just gives you a little bit of incentive to just have a sneak peek. You don't have to get too far involved with it, but know that there's value there for you. So for those of you guys who um, who have had a bit of an interest in joining me in the Inner Circle Group Coaching, we are filling up. So we're starting on the 1st of November and you're going to know if this is right for you. You'll know if I'm the right person to work with. You'll want. You'll know if the content that I'm sharing is the right content. I'm, I'm giving you snacks. I'm giving you some ideas in terms of what it's like to work with me. And that's really why I wanted to do the masterclasses. But you will know. It's not something that you are going to sit on the fence with. You'll know if it's right. So we're kicking off on the 1st of November. Each group is going to have up to eight people in them. And we are filling up those groups quite quickly. Once it gets to more than what I can handle, I am going to cut them off. So, and we are getting quite close. So I just wanted to let you guys know, um, I am, <clears throat> yeah, I'll fill you in more about that shortly. So it's a 12 month agreement. Now we agree to work together. I send you an agreement. We agree to work together for 12 months. If anything changes for you in that 12 months, I don't hold you to it. There's no payout and there's no contract. My view is that if it's working, for us to work together, we'll keep working together. If something changes for you, you are 100% allowed to say, Kaza, I just need to take a break for a minute because of X, Y, and Z and not feel guilty and not feel like I'm going to try and hold you to something and not feel like you're going to offend me. You're totally not. And the reason that I do this is because this is what works for me personally. If I'm going to work with somebody and they want to try and lock me into a contract, that's the first reason I'll say no because I need to have freedom and I need to have the ability to choose where I put my money and where I put my time. And if I'm not getting value from someone and they want me to pay out a contract, I'm sorry, that's the, that's the biggest reason I'll say no. It won't even be the price. It'll be that. So <clears throat> because that's important to me, like attracts like. So yeah, just so that you guys know that you're free. We will meet twice a month. So once a month we'll be on a group and if you're local, you can come here to Marichidor into my office. If you're not, we'll all be online. And then we will also do a one-on-one -on -one for about 90 minutes. Now that group call will probably be two, maybe three hours. I don't really care how long it takes. Whatever it takes, it takes. We will have hot seats where you can ask questions of the group and then the group can give you some mentoring and we've got some amazing people in this group. So you can ask the group questions and I will obviously still be in there providing coaching and teaching in that, in that um, group scenario. 
But then I also still think it's important that we do a deep dive into your specific circumstances and your specific business. I think that's quite vital. So that's where we'll spend our one-on-one time together once a month. And then we'll continue to do that every month for the 12 months. Again, we're starting on the 1st of November. And the reason that I do that is because I like for us to have a look at the year that was, and then I like just to have a little bit of a projection moving forward in terms of what our future is going to be, what the next 12 months is going to be. And that's where we work through a bit of a visioning process where we kind of dial into the universe and ask the universe to kind of give us some indication as to what it wants to achieve from us. And it will come in a feeling and it will come in a knowing, but it gives us direction. It gives us some clarity. And then from there, we nut out strategy. So it's not just all woohoo and universal business. Yes, it is. But you are also the arms, the legs and the action taker for the universe. Now, if you've never done it before or you've never done this work before that you're envisioning or what you've done hasn't worked, that's where you need somebody like me as a coach. 100% that's what you need. So we will then map out a strategy that will get you where you need to get faster and an accelerated ride. And this is the difference between somebody who's, you know, young without experience and somebody who's been doing it for 25 years. There's very few paths that I haven't already walked (coughs) and getting you to where you need to be quicker without as many pitfalls where you're not making as many mistakes and you're not kind of taking the tank and then trying to pull yourself back up again. Avoiding that roller coaster that tends to happen when you are going it alone is generally the reason why you would work with a coach so that you can get there in a smoother way, more effortless, more clear. And, you know, if you want to achieve something really big for yourself and there's finances around that and there's an expectation of finances around that, one thing I know for a fact, you don't want to be sitting on your thumb. You don't want to be dawdling. You don't want to be waddling. You want to kind of get there. So that's one of the reasons why you would work with me as well. So we kick off on the 1st of November and the program is $7.50 per month plus GST. So that's $8.25 per month and it comes out on a direct debit or you can deposit into my bank account, whatever works for you, don't mind. Um, but we work through that, <coughs> excuse me, we'll work through that Um, every month now the first payment happens now so then that secures your spot for the start in November and then you're always a month in advance just a little bit of logistics for there for you guys there now here's my deal here's my rule on this for those of you who don't know I am also an accountant it was one of my very first jobs and I kind of loved it (laughs) until I realized that being in four walls and a calculator was a bit restrictive But it is a huge part of what drives a lot of the work that I do. And here's my rule for myself. Every dollar I spend, I must make $4 out of it. Otherwise, I won't be spending it. So as you're looking at this coaching with me, and if you've got questions, please let me know and we can jump on a call together. But as you're looking at this coaching with me, for every dollar that you spend, it must make you four. You can work your way up to that for sure because it means that you have to take lots of action. There's lots of things that you've got to do to kind of get yourself ahead of what you want to try and achieve. But the whole objective is that this coaching doesn't just cost you $825 a month and you never get a return on that. You are your best investment. You will always give yourself a return on your investment. Always. You always have and you're always going to. The only challenge that you may have faced is you didn't know how to do it or you didn't know what to do in order to return on that investment. If you put an ad on Facebook, you can't guarantee a return on your investment. But if you put money into educating and supporting yourself, you can always guarantee an investment because it comes back in what you do and who you are. Now, if you are not willing to participate in this with me, and with the universe, if you are not willing to participate in it, do not sign up for the coaching because that's no fun for me and it's no fun for you and it just means that you're not ready because the universe is calling you and that's why you're watching this webinar now. The universe is calling you forward, but if you can't say yes to it and if you're not willing to say yes to it, then this is not what's right for you and it's totally okay. It might be right for you in five years' time. You just got to ask yourself, how long do you want to wait, right? How long do you want to wait? For me personally, I'm not waiting at all. I'm <laughs> The minute the universe inspires me, I'm like a rocket. <laughs> I 
but that's me. You guys have got to find your own balance and you've got to find your own way with this. So just understand that for all of your investment, you're not investing this with the intention of just paying money out and not getting anything back. You're investing it to follow the bouncing ball, to follow the guidance and to start to watch your income, your impact and your influence expand. Otherwise, it's not worth doing it. Does that make sense, guys? So hopefully that does make sense. So I'm going to end the webinar here. By all means, if you want to have a conversation with me about this in a little bit more detail and you want to talk through your own personal circumstances, I am here for you and ready. I don't think I've got anything more to say about that. I hope you've enjoyed today's masterclass. I've loved delivering it for you guys. If you would like a copy of the recording, for those of you who've listened in, if you'd like a copy of the recording, Yahoo, let me know. I will definitely send it off to you. But thank you so much for participating in today's webinar. I keep calling it different things, don't I? Masterclass, webinar, workshop, I don't know, this thing, this thing we're doing together, this beautiful energy that's being created between the two of us. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've gotten some gold nuggets out of it. And hopefully I'll get to do another one maybe next week. Who knows? <laughs> All right. Mwah. Big love to you guys. Thanks so much. Bye for now. Now let's stop the sharing. Uh...